So what I loved about University of Leeds was that they put you into placement very early. I think it was just the first couple of months they, they put you into placement. Did you not expect a lot from you at the start? Don't worry, that's what I thought that they wanted. I thought they were expecting me to be a radiographer right at the start and it's not. It was just a lot of worry and anxiety that was pointless. Um, so what they really just want you to do is just have a look, just to have a look at feel, to have a go, you know, with the radiographer supervision. Um, that way it prepares you for your clinical assessments right at the end of the academic year um, in May, June time. So what University of Leeds does uh, with hospital placement is that it rotates you into two separate hospitals. So in your first and third year you'll be at one hospital and then in your second you'll be rotated into another. This allows you to see what it's like to be in a major trauma centre hospital but then also the smaller hospitals as well so you get a, a varied view of what it's like being at different types of hospitals. So in my first and third year I was at Hull Royal Infirmary and Castle Hill Hospital uh, in the Hull Humberside region. So these were major trauma centres, there was a lot of car accidents, it was a very big hospital, there was very big A&E which is what I was passionate about. I liked the big A&E setting, the fast on your feet all the time, there's always something to do type setting. Uh, and then it was quite different when I went in my second year and it was Harrogate District, District Hospital. Um, it was a lot quieter, it was a lot smaller, but because you got that quieter atmosphere and there was less students, it was more one-to-one -one based. So you got to learn a lot more because you had this one-to-one -one with a lecturer rather than there being a dozen students with only a couple lecturers in the bigger hospitals. So that was very beneficial. So for both my placement sites, they offered um, dual travel and accommodation expenses refunded. Basically that means that whatever cost it took to get there, whether that's uh, driving or train um, or buses or anything like that, and any accommodation expenses that I paid for uh, because it was such a long journey, it would all get refunded. So if it's a bus, train, driving, even cycling uh, to the hospital sites, uh, you get some sort of um, compensation. Uh, you get fully refunded in the case of train tickets and bus tickets uh, as well as petrol costs. Um, with accommodation, um, you get accommodation covered in all hospitals except from if you've uh, got placement at Leeds uh, area because that's classed as being close to home. Um, and that you don't need accommodation for that. But for me, for the Harrogate District Hospitals and the Hull Hospitals, they offered free accommodation. So basically how it worked was that you were uh, given a set um, budget. So you're given 55 pounds a night um, and you're allowed to stay anywhere. You have to book all this yourself, which was scary at the start because I wasn't quite sure what to do, but it gives you a real sense of independence after it. And it's a, it's a big learn, it's, um, a big thing to overcome and I'm able to do this now with ease um, you know it doesn't take three years to do it it only takes them you know a couple of weeks of practice and then you sort it you know what you're doing so it's 55 pounds a night you get to choose wherever you want to go you get to uh, choose a hotel um, Airbnb or you get to stay at the hospital if you wanted to because the most hospitals run their own their own housing uh, facilities for their staff so they've got like a certain um, estates next right next to the hospital. It's a lot cheaper. It's around about twenty-five pounds, I think it is, near Hull. Um, and you get um, it's it's basically shared accommodation, sort of, with one other person. Uh, you and this other person um, will share a house together uh, with a kitchen, yet your own room, and all that lot. Uh, the other person's usually um, another student. They like placing you with other students. It just makes the whole thing a, a lot easier. But if not, it'll just be with another staff member. Um, so that way is perfectly safe as well. I tended to use accommodations such as hotels because they're nicer in my opinion. Um, I would just go through booking sites as though you're booking a holiday really. You literally just do that and then as long as you have an invoice to prove where you were, uh, where you stayed and how much it costs, you just give that to the, the university um, at the end of a placement block for example and then you'll get fully refunded which was really good. Um, it's not advised to travel daily to your placement sites when it's potentially an hour and a half 
commute time to get just one way. For example, the whole the train takes an hour, then you got to get to the train station hull to the hospital. So the whole thing could take a, a very long time. So it's highly recommended to have the accommodation side. Um, you get recommended uh, by the university and by the uh, clinical practice leaders at your hospitals, you know, certain places to stay, maybe certain places to avoid, uh, the best uh, rates uh, for the hotels going. So they do offer you, uh, they do help you um, make the right decision uh, when it comes to accommodation and some, a lot of students also like to stay together. So you can get your place to yourself, it's perfectly fine, but if you want to share a hotel room um, or an Airbnb or, or a house with someone in your accommodation site, perfectly fine. Uh, it helps with um, being alone as well because if you're going to, in a new city that you've never been to before, having someone else there, having another student there with you, it, eases, um, it eases a lot of the anxiety. Uh, it can make you also feel safer as well, so that's highly recommended as well to do.